Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to another Deen Stream podcast sponsored by Al Hassan Foundation. Alhamdulillah, we are a week into Ramadan, subhanAllah. The, f- the time is flying by. Um, today we wanted to touch up on an issue that's become an epidemic and it's, it's taking our community by storm, subhanAllah. And that doesn't go away, unfortunately, for a lot of people in Ramadan. So the topic today will be about addictions, all sorts of addictions. So whether it's, it's drugs, whether it's prescription meds, whether it's alcohol, whether it's gambling, no matter what it is, we want to address it, inshallah, and hopefully, hopefully provide you guys with some advice and, and some ways to rectify our lives and your lives, and bi'idhnillah, we can take it from there. I'll be joined with Sheikh Ali Gazila, our brother Fred Nagi, and Abu Ahmed live from Lebanon, inshallah. So what I want to ask Ali first is, is what's the Islamic perspective on addictions that are effective to your health in, in negative ways, inshallah? Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Firstly, this goes back to one distinct ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu innama al-khamru wal-maysiru wal-ansabu wal-azlamu rijusum min amal al-shaytani fajtanibuhu la'allakum tuflihun. Are you who believe intoxicants, gambling, ideology, and divination are abominations of Satan's doing Avoid them so that you may prosper. We notice here in this ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he refers to things such as intoxicants and he refers to gambling, which are two addictions sadly affecting our community today, he doesn't just refer to them as being abomination, but he refers to them being what as well? Min amal shaitan, from the work of the devil. So this shows that in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sight, the fact that it's an abomination and on top of that, the fact that it's from the doing of the devil, it means that yani, it's a ziyada. It's an increase of how disgusting it is in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. And uh, from a religious perspective, from an Islamic point of view, what advice can we give someone yani, to... How would it be effective for them to stop what they're doing um, from an Islamic point of view? Because we can give someone advice Islamically and they might not take it. So what's, what kind of steps can we take to help them in that situation? Well, firstly, yani, going back to this ayah, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to it as being amal shaitan the doing of the devil. For someone to actually remind themselves and be aware of this, that's the first step. Because it's not from Allah, it's from the devil. And when they fall into it, they're falling to the plot of who? Shaitan. shaitan. And then after that, obviously, to seek help. And some people may say, you know, it's going to bring shame to my family or it's going to bring shame to, you know, my um, my uh, family name. For example, they could mean direct family or the family as a whole. Um, yani if someone is sinking low in this, they have to do this. They have to go and seek this help. And there's nothing wrong with the rehab in itself. Yani it's not something looked down upon Islamic. Rather, this is from tawakkul. This yeah. is from having reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then also, yani prevention for example what i mean by that is if they know that they're gonna have friends that are on the stuff and they really want to make a change they should take every measure to not attend those gatherings and if they see that yani after that if they see that they're still falling into it and they can't break from this crowd then change the crowd even if you have to leave the state because when we look at the hadith where the man killed the 99 and then he made he eventually killed a hundred when he met the scholar, what was the advice of the scholar immediately? To leave the town he was in. So these are just some uh, practical points that we can give. Yani first to realize that this is from the shaitan. And when you fall into it, you're falling into his plot. And then to, in everything in due measure that I mentioned afterwards, these are just some practical steps. We're in the month of Ramadan, alhamdulillah. So now would potentially be the perfect time for them to sort of work on that. Of course. Right, because they'll... Hopefully, we they hope they're fasting during the day, and then at night, you know, we all get that surge of iman. So hopefully, they're also at the masjid, so they have less time to kind of do that recreational stuff if they are into it. Mm-hmm. So, is Ramadan like the ideal time for them to seek that help? Of course, yeah, I mean, because like you said, if they are still having concern about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and still having concern about the symbol of Islam known as Ramadan, the pillar of Islam, 
then that is a very good sign. And if they are able to give up food, which is mubah, permissible in itself, then it should only make them stronger afterwards, be idnillah, to give up what is haram after. So we hope. Inshallah. Um, we wanted to get Abu Ahmed's point of view as well. Okay. Um, I believe he is live, inshallah. Uh, just waiting for him. There he is. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum, Sheikh. Salam alaikum. Wa alaykum salam, How's everything? Inshallah, your Ramadan is good. Alhamdulillah. Um, so we are on the topic of. Sorry, it's a bit delayed. So I, I thought you had finished. Go ahead, keep going. So we're we're just on the topic of addictions, and I know you've been around in the community for more than twenty years, and you've offered help, you've offered advice, counselling, and whatnot to people going through this stuff. So, could you offer us? and the audience inshallah that are watching some kind of advice and what kind of road they should take to get the help that they need I personally think if you go back 20 years you're going to see a big uh, difference within the community um, if your son daughter were addicted or a family member was addicted it would be a big shame sort of thing on the family uh, where the family would actually hide everything uh, these days uh, it's a little bit different now where you know, it's a bit more accepted in terms of, yes, there are people in our families, in our communities that are addicted to drugs, addicted to alcohol, addicted to certain things, but there's more help now. And there's not, uh, people aren't as shameful in terms of coming out and saying, hey guys, I need help. So I think personally, personally, yeah, you have to actually accept there's a, there's a problem with me or with a family member and you need to come out and ask because believe me, addiction is not easy. You can't do it on your own. You can't do it, any, for instance, if it's just my son that's addicted, I might not, not understand how to help him. You know, I'm not a professional in the field or, or whatnot. So we need to get the individuals or the professionals involved, which means the communities, yeah, or the community uh, members need to back up organisations that are helping. Um, you know, when it comes to drugs and uh, alcohol addiction, that's very very important. You know, the, the community really needs to step up and, and and make a change in terms of okay, we have these problems within the community. What do we have to do? Who do we need to get in? For instance, you need people that have gone through it, that are off it now, yeah, that can give the advice. You need the professional doctors, um, psychologists, and, and, and so on and so forth uh, from there. Alhamdulillah, we are actually uh, looking ourselves as the Lahsan Foundation. Uh, we're looking at uh, a drug counselling uh, facility um, that we're going to be announcing soon, inshallah. So that's in the planning, inshallah. So uh, I guess that's something we all have to hold hand by hand uh, within the whole community. Again, not one organisation, not one person, one doctor or whoever is going to solve this problem. Us as a community need to hold our uh, hands together so that we can actually uh, achieve the goals of giving a solution for people that are, that have that problem. Have you seen more of a problem with prescription meds in uh, in regards to like um, Valiums or Zannies, um things like that, endones, painkillers? Uh, are they more of a problem than the recreational stuff that we know of? Yeah, well, to be, to be honest, uh, I think it's, all, it's all, all around the prescription drugs. I know many people, we know people that have actually passed away that were addicted to that as well. It's unfortunate. Um, even going to, back to the point of our young children, even using that, what's that little puffer thing, that, uh, that vape, whatever it is, yep. um, they're, they're starting young. You know, you're talking about 12-year-olds, 11-year-olds that are, are, are vaping at the moment now. That's going to get them addicted. You know, us as parents, as community uh, individuals, and the unfortunate thing is it's all about money, whether it's drugs, whether it's vaping, what, what, you know, our community is like, you know, you know how many Muslims are actually drug dealers or how many Muslims are selling these vapes to these kids? You can actually get it delivered to your home, you know what I mean? That's how easy it is. So we have to start waking up to ourselves thinking, you know what, the, the, these people that are selling the drugs, you're actually killers. You're not only just, just drug dealers, you're killers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to ask you on the day of judgment, you know, you've sold this to this individual and you've actually killed him. So mm -hmm. I don't know what they're going to say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. And this is a huge, huge thing within our community. And we need to wake up to ourselves. SubhanAllah. I wanted to address our brother Fred. Um, so we've got the Islamic perspective. And inshallah, and alhamdulillah, you've rectified your life. You've changed your life. You've turned it around. So I wanted to get, Yani some sort of experiences that you've had from from around you people that you know alhamdulillah rabbil alamin was salatu was salam ala rasulillah wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in one word to sum it up this is a huge huge massive problem 
like it's bigger than what anyone here thinks or anyone that's listening at home thinks. Many viewers that are online now, their actual kids or husband or wife or brother or family member or even their parents have addictions. SubhanAllah. And, and um, as an ummah, I've, like, I've been talking to many brothers, like we need, we need the Islamic Rehabilitation Center because there's addiction and then there's obsession. Um, it's easy to say he's addicted, but the, there's a hadith uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verse where he made alcohol forbidden, Yusuf. The streets of Medina were flowing with alcohol. There was companions throwing, putting their fingers down their throat, throwing up the alcohol. So I'm sure there might be some viewers that have bottles on their shelf right now because there definitely will be. And my advice, if you're, like, if you're listening, <laughs> go empty that bottle, man. 100%. Because it's only going to bring you misery, heartache. Like, <sighs> it's just an ongoing cycle. Yeah, like I've 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 seen some bad stuff. I've seen some bad stuff, man, and I've I've seen a l like I've seen a lot. You know, I've I've been around for a while and um I've got a lot of friends that are no longer with us and friends family members that are not no longer with us. You know, I never mention names, I never mention well, I'm not I'm not that kind of guy to shame or belittle anyone. And I hope everyone that's watching knows that if you know someone that's got a problem or has an addiction or a family member or a relative or even just someone that lives in your street, don't go mop the floor with them. Don't go bragging. He's on this, he's on that with pride looking down at them because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can test you or your child or even your mum or dad with that same problem. You need to be positive. You need to have love for your community you need to have love for Allah's creation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation that person is a human being he's going through a test you don't just turn your back on him because he's got an addiction whether it's drugs or pills or alcohol or gambling gambling is a massive problem Yusuf gambling brother is huge online as brother Ahmed was saying you know, vape to your door, just bang. It's, it's at your door, like whatever you want. Like social media, like when, when I was 15, 16, and some of my mates had heroin addictions and other addictions, like their parents used to send them to Lebanon. I don't know if Ahmed will remember, like they'll send them to Lebanon to do a blood transfusion to, to, to try to get them off it, and they'll come back and they'll just get back on it. Um, you, you have to work together as a community. It's, it's, it's almost impossible to do it on your own. If you haven't got Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your life, because Yusuf, the way, if you overdose, you're going to get resurrected in the same state that you died. Allah Akbar. You know, like this is a massive, serious problem. Like we, we, we really need to get everyone to wake up. You know, I've, I've had friends, you know, we were out one night, me and one of my mates, and he got a phone call. His father used to drink. And um, he was that intoxicated and he couldn't even move. He was paralyzed. He was on his bed, on his back, paralyzed. And he threw up. And because he couldn't move or call for help, it went back down his windpipe and choked him and his father passed away. Allah. So, you know, it's, it's a pretty serious issue, man. Addictions. And um, prescription medication, man, is just so accessible. Everyone's connected to someone. Everyone's got access to something. I think that's the problem. Everything's so easily It's too easy. It's too available. easy. It's too easy, brother. Hello, when so people think of addiction, gambling isn't the first thing that comes to their mind. No. But, nah, but we know it's... it's, it's substances, yeah. So, uh, have you seen the effects of what gambling has done to people? Mate, I've seen people lose their homes lose their family, lose their wife, lose their kids, and then kill themselves after it. Like, commit suicide because they can't, they can't deal with it. 
it's 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 a serious issue. It's a, it's a lot to take in. Not not just in our community, like in general, you know, in general, some people can't deal with losing everything. They just can't face anyone. They can't like look at anyone anymore. You know, and us as believers, you know, we turn back to Allah, we say Alhamdulillah, and then we find ways to be positive. Speak to brothers, like there's brothers that can help, and there's brothers like. If, if you have an addiction, no matter what it is, whether it's pornography or, or drugs or alcohol or gambling, like, speak out, man. Like, silence is the biggest killer. You need, to, you need to reach out and ask for help. It's not embarrassing. Like, why is it embarrassing? Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Yeah, you just, you just need to say, look, I need help. Um, there's a lot of people that go through this. But without the judgment... 100%. I guess it's without the judgment. That's where everyone fears. The, the problem in, is within our community. We're so judgmental where we have to actually sit, think and think, okay, this person is sinning. But apart from the sinning, we need to help that individual. In the hadith that Ali mentioned about the person who killed 99 people, and he, the, the first person maybe judged him and said, look, Allah's not going to forgive you. But the scholar who had knowledge of Islam knew that Allah will forgive. And this is the biggest problem for us, the people that aren't addicted to, to these things. We can't be judgmental in that. We have to say, okay, this person's arrived to me. I have to help this individual to guide him to the truth, to the forgiveness of the, the, and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that, I think, is our, in the education that our community also needs to understand. It's not about judging them and saying, oh, that, that guy's a, a, you know, a, a junkie, this guy's a drugger, this guy's addicted. No, no, alhamdulillah, he's come back. So he has some goodness in his heart, subhanAllah. And that's what we have to do. But uh, so I think we need to discuss the point of the, the, the start of when people, you know, before addiction, it's about... Any fun, recreation, I'm hanging out with my mates. And that also needs to be discussed, I think. And uh, Brother Fred, I think you can sort it's of touch on that where, you know, the peer pressure of individuals or the groups, you know, you want to be amongst us, you have to smoke a joint. You want to be amongst us, you know, pop this pill. Can you just discuss these yeah, things? Yeah, yeah, like oh. even when I was 12, 13, 14, you know, there was blue light discos back then. So I'm sure a lot of the viewers that are watching remember that. And um, it'd be in halls, whether it's Reevesby, RSL or... Bankstown Trotters Club or whatever it may be. There used to be blue light discos and, you know, we used to go there and try this, try that. And um, people that don't even hesitate, yeah, no worries. Like now even, like there's rev parties, you just see on the news, five, three, 15, 16, seven-year-olds dead from a couple of MDMA pills or, or whatever they've, they've given them there. It's, it's just, they go there to have fun, innocence, some of them even get their drink spiked just to have fun. Oh, yeah, let's spike his drink as a joke. Next thing, the bloke's dead because he might have a heart condition. He might have an underlying health issue that counteracts with that and, and they stop breathing. And then as soon as they're 18, oh, as soon as I turn 18, Yusuf, we, I, can get, I, can get in, I can get into a nightclub. Yeah, I can go buy exciting. alcohol. Yeah, then they're in the nightclubs and they think, wow, this is it. Like they're waiting for the 18th birthday. And you're thinking, wow, I'm inside a nightclub, the music, the girls, the, the blokes, it's, it's all happening. First, it starts off a bit of fun, but then when the come down hits you and you start feeling the, the, the come down where you're, you're uncomfortable, you just want to be in a corner alone, and then, bro, oh, I don't feel well. Yeah, yeah, have, have, have another line or have, have another pill. And then, oh, wow, you're feeling good again. And you're, it's, it's all happening. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Over and over and over. Yeah, again. and then that's it. And then, Brother, I can't sleep. My heart's pounding. What do I do? Oh, yeah, I'll drop off some Xanax, some Valiums. They pop three, four Xanax, man. They don't wake up. They don't wake up. How many brothers How many brothers haven't woke up and sisters? How many haven't woke up in their sleep from, from sleeping pills? SubhanAllah. Because the harder you've partied, the longer you've stayed awake, little do they know. They think I've been awake for so many days, I need to take so much more. But really, the longer you've been awake, is the heart that's going to hit you. That's why they pop two, three zannies and they don't wake up. Their heart's so tired, it just, it just goes to rest. SubhanAllah. So, yeah, we're, we're that's, that's another thing. Keep going, I, I guess that's another problem with the doctors. I, I, I hear that the doctors just, you know, if someone's got a bit of a you know, problem, they will go to the doctor and they'll just throw these prescription drugs to them. Oh, they know every line under the book. Thing well. they, know, they know exactly what to yeah. say. Go to the doctor, tell him, your heart's racing, uh, you're feeling like this, you're feeling, then the doctor, all right, yallah, gives him a prescription. And if the doctor doesn't give it, they can get it through other contacts, through other means. 
it's so accessible and it's a massive yeah. problem. I just wanted to ask you, um, yeah. with, with people that like to hide their addictions, Daniel, what are some signs you can look for to kind of maybe realise and catch on that someone's... Okay, if, that? If, if your child or your family member, you see a change, Yusuf, in their sleeping pattern. You see a change in their behavior. You see a change in their tone of voice. I don't wanna, I'll be home soon, up all night, walking in and out of the house, on the phone. You, 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 you'll, un, you'll, you'll know that something's wrong because th this is out of their character to be behaving this way. SubhanAllah. Yeah, like, oh, mum, I'm, I'm, I'm not tired, I can't sleep. And you know your son goes to bed every night. Nine, nine o'clock, he's out cold. Till seven, eight in the morning. He's up one, two in the morning on the PlayStation. Gonna go get something to eat with my mates. Starts like getting agitated and snappy. You know what I mean? And fiery and, and they start lying a lot. Or they could be on downers where they'll be sleeping a lot. Up, up, up for a few days, then sleeping a lot. So if your family member, if you see a change in their pattern, you'll, you'll, you'll know straight away pick that up yeah what's happening you got you got to speak to them and and um you got to you got to confront them and you got to you got to educate your kids from a young age man the parents have to always be at it son this is haram that's haram take them to see people at, at, at the cemetery look this is this is where you end up it's got to be like that that guide that you got to you, you, you got to be harsh but you also got to be gentle at the same time with your words. Mm -hmm. Like, be firm, but also win their heart over. You got to be their friend. The minute you come against them, they're going to rebel. Yeah. I don't want to live anymore. Yeah, yeah. Like, because when you're under the influence, like, you haven't slept for a couple of days, maybe, and reality is just gone out the door. You don't even know who you are anymore. Mm. You start hearing noises. You start seeing things. You start feeling things. I had a mate I grew up with. And um, his dad was a really nice fella, man. Allah had Hamo. And um, I knew his dad for a long time. Well, me, like, I still know the brother. And um, he was hearing voices. He was hearing noises. He became psych psychotic, paranoid. He became like schizophrenic. Like he actually killed his father, Yusuf. Allah Akbar. And like I was shattered. So it can get to the point where if you know your kids are on something, like don't come at them harsh. Don't hit them, man. Don't. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Number one, it's haram to strike them. And number two, they're going to probably strike your back. And if they start hearing noises in their head and get paranoid, yeah, the shaitan's whispering in their ear. Your dad called the cops because you saw the cops driving past. You, you'll turn on your own family members like this is very very dangerous man like this is a big 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 thing it's not it's not it's not easy man this, so this personally happened in my family i had a family member that that turned on um one of the family members due to drugs he actually yani, subhanallah, let, let bullets out Allahu Akbar. yeah this this goes so deep into the community yeah that it's destroying families it's destroying friendships it is it's destroying a person's own identity with themselves they no longer remember who they are they don't remember their connection with allah they don't remember their connection with their own family so this idea of fun can turn into such a dark dark place for someone subhanallah it's a soul consumer and fred i'm sure you only have experienced yani it's it's as if the person their soul's gone Wallah, before I um, decided to come onto this show, because um, my brother Yusuf, like, I love him dearly. Barakallah fiqh, my brother. And um, unconditionally. And, um, and Abu Ahmad, I love this brother, and he knows that too. Um, it was a hard decision for me to come on here. I didn't want to come on here, man. Allah al -Azim. But i got to try to help the community. i got to, you know, alhamdulillah, I'm here. Um... It's very much appreciated, my brother. Yeah, and subhanAllah, like, I've been down this road. Of course. And I don't want to make it, like, I'm not here 
make this about me. Like I don't like, but I've I've had bad experiences myself. And I rang Sheikh Kamel yesterday. I said, "Look, the boys want me to go on um, Al Hassan podcast. They want to bring up the subject." And he said to me, "He goes, do it." I go, "Yeah, but there's something like I want I want to mention, but I don't know if I can. Should I mention it?" He goes, "What's that, Fred?" I said, "I said Sheikh Kamel, when I used to be like in that state, like I used to feel like." My iman, like some of my iman was gone, like it's like it was flying away. Like it's, yeah, like I'm like. You realize the part then will The then will beep on my phone, I'll click it on silent, then I'll turn it off, notifications. Like I know I gotta pray, but I just couldn't do it. SubhanAllah. And then for days, days, weeks, months to just get my salat pattern back, to get my, to like r r forgetting verses from the Quran. Like everything became like just folder, like couldn't care less. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I started questioning. I started questioning, like my faith. Allahu Akbar. That's that's like, like I look back now, and like for the brothers and sisters that have issues, don't question your faith, man. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will forgive you. Don't ever think la taqnatu min rahmatillah. Do not despair the mercy of your Lord. And like you said before, this is the perfect month. There's multiple ahadith for fasting, for qiyam, for staying up for Laylatul Qadr, that Allah will wipe away all your sins. 100%. This yes. is the perfect time, inshallah. Yeah, and if you can, like the brother, the brother said, if you can refrain from eating and drinking, don't think like, oh yeah, I can't stop. You, you can stop. You can stop. And if you can't get help, someone will help you stop. We're all weak. We're all human beings. None of us are, are perfect. And we all need to reach out. That's the reality. Don't think you're hard. Don't think you're you're gonna. It, it's embarrassing. It's 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 not. You slipped up. You got you, you got yourself hooked with some wrong people, and you're in a bit of a dilemma. But it, it can be fixed, man. You know, people sure. pe people get sick with cancer, and they go through chemo and all this stuff, and they come out of it and they're happy and and they fought and they they done it. So, you, it's it's more of an obsession. Like, there's an addiction, yes, but people are obsessed and they, and, and they want to feel sorry for themselves. And some people get on stuff just for attention. And some people get on stuff, oh, this happened, I want to forget about it. Like, don't make up excuses. Be a soldier. La ilaha illallah is in your heart. Yes, yes. Remember who you are, remember your identity. If you can't beat the shaitan and beat, beat your habit or reach out to get help, then something's wrong. 100% inshallah. Um, what I wanted to ask uh, Ali and Abu Ahmed uh, was, was what's yani, the Islamic attitude to have towards someone that is in this uh, situation in their life? So are you allowed to boycott someone who's in this situation? Can you, I guess, shun them, which is what a, lo a lot of people do. Um, if a person knows someone's on drugs, someone's addicted to alcohol, they, they sometimes even expose them and they keep their distance and sort of close them off from from a group of mates. They cut them out and they kind of go alone. Um, Allahu Alam, but I think that's a very bad thing to do because they have now more of an opportunity to be in their own dark bubble. So if they want to go get something or do something or, or whatever, it's it's easier for them to do it because they don't have the judgment of those people anymore. They're, they're no longer in their life. Tadal, Sheikh. Did you want to... Give your point of view first. Sorry, uh, so it's, uh, the sound's lagging a bit. So, what's the uh, what did you say, Ali? Did you want to give your point of view on what Yusuf asked first about how to treat the Muslim drug addict or the Muslim who's addicted to to any haram addiction, based on your experience as well? I personally think, look, if we're going to look at the, um, the the parents, if you're talking about you know, a parent or somebody, a caretaker, or whatever it may be, I think we're not really educated enough to understand what to do f uh, from there. Because generally, if you're an Arab, the first thing is you may smash that child, you may rebuke him, you may do a million things wrong to turn off that child, you know what I mean? So again, having organizations and centers coming out, messages coming out and, um, you know, providing information, um, showing them what to do for anyone that has these problems, this is crucial for us. 
So again, it's not an individual thing where you can take it on on your own because you may, for instance, let's just say you you rebuke your child and uh, the child goes overdoses and kills uh, kills himself. You know what I mean? Because the parent didn't know what to do. So that's a major problem for us. You know, what does the, the parent do for a child? Again, education is so crucial. So for the, the, the people that are in the, uh, in the community that has this knowledge, we really need to support them so they can focus on the community to give us the information that we do need. Again, we have to move away from the fact of, oh, this is embarrassing. We need to get over that because we know, we know for a fact there are so many people going into the masjid, and we're not talking only about brothers, we're talking about sisters. I've heard of Nakobi sisters in addicted. And we have to talk and we have to say this is a reality. I know some people will say, you shouldn't be mentioning this, you shouldn't be mentioning that, but we have to be honest with ourselves and come out. We have major problems, whether it's drugs, whether it's prescription um, uh, drugs, um, alcohol, as uh, brother, um, the brother mentioned before, uh, gambling, gambling is huge. So many families have been you know, put down or destructed due to gambling. How do we fix this? How do we help this? What do we do? Again, so I don't think it's a bit hard just pinpointing the, the, the problem at the, um, at the parent because it's not the parent's fault because they don't know how to do or what to do. How do they solve that for their, uh, for their child? It's, it's a hard situation. The parents need to... You know what I mean? So, uh, the parents need ahead. to also not feel embarrassed that, oh, I've got to get help for my son. I'm going to shame my family name. No, you're not. You're going to sh shame your family name when people find out that your son had a problem or your daughter had a problem and you knew about it. And you didn't do anything about it. You were just belting them and giving them mouthfuls and, and fighting with them. And nah, khalas, there's an issue. No worries. Son, brother, husband, wife, whatever it is. Look, what's going on? Talk to me. Okay, I'll get your help. You have to acknowledge and accept both parents, family members, and the person that's, that's got the problem. You have to acknowledge, yes, I do have a problem. A lot of people don't want to admit it. Nah, man, I don't have a problem. I just do it recreational. No, no, no. You do have a problem. You do have a problem because you're you're obsessed with it. You want you, you want to have it, and you do, like a lot of people. The thing that that they don't understand, and I've seen this so many times throughout my life with a lot of friends and people that I know that I've been involved with. They don't even know that they have a habit. They don't even know, oh man, it's only on the weekends. Yeah, it's only on the weekends. But then during the week when there's something not going right, I'll go have a bit of this oh, just to forget about it, just to get away. Mm. And then next thing, every time they've got a problem, what are they going to turn to? Drugs. They turn to that. Mm. And then before you know it, they start getting the cravings, you can't sleep, you get anxiety, you get paranoia, you start having issues. And before you know it, you, 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 you're going down a dark tunnel, man. So for the parents or the family members, don't make them feel that it's the end of the world. Don't make them feel like, don't belittle them. Help them, care for them, love them. Don't, don't turn on them. Don't hit them. Like, and don't, definitely don't go expose them. Mm. If there's a member of the community, a community going around with a gun, robbing families, yeah, all right, that's different. But don't, don't go expose them. Tell him, look, you know, we can get help. We can do something. And we, we need, we need an Islamic rehabilitation center. We, we really, really, really need one. I've been coming. saying this for years. Um, we, we, we need it. And, and it's got to be affordable, man. Because I've, I've, I've got friends. They're like, no, nah, I can't go to rehab. Freddie, it's 30 grand for a month. Sure, 30 grand for a month. Who's got that? Huh. You know, we, we, need, we need to have it where, where that they can afford it. Um, they can get help. And we don't have to go expose them to the whole world. You know what yeah. I mean? Just on the note of Hajar of uh, boycotting in Islam the maqsood of it the intent of it is that in order for the person to turn off the sin and come back but let us focus on our situation as Muslims the Muslim lands or even here especially it's more of a reality here we do not have the authority and I'll give an example of that Ka'ab ibn Malik radiallahu an, when he turned away from the battle of Tabuk and then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam ordered the Muslims as well to boycott him, to not even give him salams. And he even ordered for his wife to, to refrain from him and even sleep at her parents' house. This is because the boycotting would have a positive effect. Why? Because the community was Muslim. But we've got to realize we are not in a Muslim land. And the power isn't ours. So boycotting would not necessarily have the positive effect. Because as, as Brother Freddie is saying, yani, the more you push them away, who's going to welcome them with open arms? 
the other friend that's got the, got the needle ready to put it in their vein. And as well, we've got to realize that not every person that's felt into addiction is the same. They're all different levels. Someone, as Fred said, Yani, someone is someone that suffered something and they thought this would find comfort. Yani, it's due to something. Whereas others, Yani, they're recre recreational. And others, for example, Yani, they could, they could be the ones who, who promote it. Yani, you know, they can make the videos and stuff like this and promote the use of it, promote the sale of it. These are the type of people, if we're going to boycott, need to, they're the ones who need to be boycotted. As for the two other ones, they need help. They need you to, to have, give them nasiha, give them advice with hikmah. While it's, yani, while it's telling them, yes, the sin is bad, what you're doing is bad, but Allah is the all-forgiving, the most merciful. He wants you to come back. That's the approach we have to have because not everyone is the same. And I'm sure Brother Fred has experienced it more than any of us. Yani. Just to go back to the Prophet ﷺ, there was a Sahabi who was addicted to alcohol. Mm -hmm. Can you touch up on that for the audience, inshallah, please? The hadith that comes to mind is actually a Sahabi, but it was in the Battle of Qadisiyah. Yani, I don't recall of his name, but he was in the army of Saad ibn Abi Waqqas. And he was a skilled fighter as well. But due to his um, constant drinking, uh, Saad radiallahu an ordered for him to be locked up. So on the day that the battle occurred, um, Saad had to go and see how the army was and things like this. So the only person that could overlook the state of the prisoner who was the alcoholic was Saad radiallahu an's wife. So he heard that the Muslims were starting to lose. And it was getting to him. And he kept saying to Saad's wife, please let me go, please let me go, please let me go. So he covered his face. She eventually let him go due to the losses that the Muslims were incurring. And he covers his face and he rides Saad's horse. And everyone's like, who is this? SubhanAllah, some of the narrations say that yeah, they even thought it was a malik, an angel that came to help them in the battle. SubhanAllah. But then later on, it turns out it was, the, it was the Sahabi who was an alcoholic and he said, Wallahi, the prevention from the battle was enough for me to give up that addiction. Allahu Akbar. So it goes back to someone who has an addiction to, to, saying, to say to themselves and be real, what's my priority? Allah or this worldly temporary illusion from shaitan? SubhanAllah. One, well, one other thing, Yusuf, just before I forget. Yep. Um, if your family member is scattered or off their face you, you know what i mean yep. if they're on on something it's very hard to to talk to them to reason with them to like sometimes if they if they just want to go to sleep they've been out for a few nights or whatever like d don't don't push and push and push like don't stay in their face wait till they're a bit sober if they're drunk or whatever it is because you you know man of I've had heaps of fights yeah. with drunks. And um, like, you can't fight fire with fire. You know, let them, let them sober up and then say, come here. You know, give you time to, yeah, to come like, down and Yeah, recover. the last couple of days, like you, you came home, you were angry, you were, you know, you, you just turned the house upside down and like, what's going on? Because when, when they're in that state, they can really hurt you. The, you know you know what I mean? So you really got to, like uh, the brother said, speak to him with hikmah, with wisdom. Um, yeah, like, like speak to him when, when you can speak to him. When they're, when they're like that, it's, it's, it's just a, not a waste of time, but they're not going to listen. You got to wait they, for the right Yeah, because they're not in their right state of mind. Like, they're, they're not, it's gone from one ear out the other. That's even if it's going in, yeah. Yeah, one of their ears. That's so true. Khair, inshallah. Um, I did come across a quote the other day from Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah, and he said from the signs of the softness of the heart of the believer is that when his Muslim brother falls and stumbles the believer feels pain due to this so much so that it is as if he himself fell and stumbled and he should not rejoice at his tragedy subhanallah yeah. I read this quote and I've, I've never read it before but yani, it, it shows yani, the believer should have a soft heart towards someone that's fallen and stumbled 100%. and fallen in this situation and to and to kind of not be happy or rejoice at someone falling into that of course and we find this is the opposite yani, uh, sadly in our community 
who becomes the talk of town? The the person who drives the most gossip and drama. Yeah, so but also the only if someone falls into it, instead of reaching out, what's wrong with this person? It becomes the gossip. Yes. And uh, the Prophet sallallahu what did Allah Ta'ala say about him? He was towards the, the believers, Ra'uf, compassionate and merciful. This was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Do we not follow him? Of course. And it's, it's, it's easy to talk, but when, at time, when the push comes to shove, where is this with us? And do we, if we find the brother's gone missing and he's making like, you know, his sin public and stuff, do we, do we just focus on why he's making it public or what got him there? Right, subhanAllah. And how do we get him away from that? Exactly. Khair, inshallah. I've got, I've got this hadith here, Yusuf, if I can... Um, yep, tfaddal. Sheikh Kamal sent it to me yesterday. Um, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrated that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, so viewers, please listen, listen to this hadith. Whoever kills himself with an instrument of iron, he will come on the day of judgment with the iron in his hand to continually stab himself in his stomach with a, in the fire of Jahannam. Dwelling is that state eternally. And whoever kills himself with poison, and when we say poison, this is what much, we're talking about. A lot of what, whatever's poisoning your body, whatever's harming your body. Mm. Whoever, whoever kills himself with poison, then his poison will be in his hand to continually take it in the fire of Jahannam. Dwelling is that state Eternally, Allahu Akbar. May Allah protect so us. So we need to, we need to fear Allah, and we need to f also fear Allah for those family members or those friends. We don't want to just let them go like that. Like we need to be patient ourselves. And hikma, it all comes back to hikma, etiquettes, manners, behavior, the way you speak to someone to win them over, because you can't come against them because they'll rebel yeah. and they'll just run away from home. Or they'll just won't answer their phone. They'll, they'll, they'll just disappear one from, from days. Yeah. You might get a phone call from a, a police officer or from a hospital. Or the morgue come identify your, your family member. Allahu Akbar. And, and it's happening around us. I've seen it many, many times. I've buried a lot of friends, man. May Allah never test us like that. Amen. 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 Um, and it's close to time before that we go. Um, I just wanted to mention um, that Abu Ahmed and, and our brother Ahmed at the moment they are overseas, alhamdulillah, overlooking a lot of uh, food distribution and a lot of work that's going on through Al Ihsan Foundation. Um, they are, alhamdulillah, now in Lebanon. They won't be there for too long. I believe uh, next Wednesday or Tuesday they'll be going to Turkey as well. Um, so please keep them in your dua as well. And if you do have your needs with sadaqa uh, to do with uh, zakat al mal, zakat al fitr, um, if you do want to feed people throughout the month of Ramadan please visit the Al Ihsan page and you can find all the information there inshallah I wanted to just ask Abu Ahmed if he had any messages for us before he leaves inshallah 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 well, one thing uh, you might be thinking like uh, in areas that are poor there's no addiction there's actually a huge addiction here especially that's starting starting to happen in in, uh, in Lebanon due to poverty people have no money no work they have uh, problems, issues arising, um, and the unfortunate thing here in Lebanon at the moment now, they're popping pills because they're so cheap. Um, you know, you've got other areas, I'm not going to mention the actual uh, the country, but they choose something called khat. Uh, uh, it's like a green herb sort of thing. Um, uh, you know, the, you, you'll find it um, in Yemen, Somalia, uh, different countries like this, where, where they grow these, these plants, and it gives them a high. It makes them forget the, the issues that they're in. So again, my, my point here is most uh, or a lot of people end up addicted or taking drugs or alcohol, whatever it may be, uh, gambling, due to their lack of tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they, they, they forget who's the one that can get you out of any, any issue. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when they pop the drug, it makes them feel okay for a set time. Before you know it, they're going to be addicted. Then with that, that's when the actual the, the major issues start to, uh, to, to kick in. Uh, they need more drugs, they want to forget more, the pain that they're feeling has to go away from the addiction and all these sort of things. So again, teaching our children at a young age to make, uh, to put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And another thing is that we need to understand not every individual is going to be a millionaire. Not every individual is going to have a, a, a high social status that they want. 
You know, we're so addicted to social media these days, subhanAllah. You know, you see all these people, you see all the glamour and glory of uh, of the dunya, but we're forgetting that even the Prophet sallallahu would starve. He'll put stones on his stomach, subhanAllah, to the point where he was starving. So don't think success in this dunya is about having, you know, a lot of wealth or eating whatever we want, going to any restaurant that we feel. It has nothing to do with that. It's about your faith. It's about your iman. It's about your worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are things that we're forgetting. And because you know, it's unfortunate, there's so much you need pressure on us. You know, all the chick, all the all the girls have to have you know these puffed up legs. They have to do their uh, their cheeks, Botox, and all these other things. You know, the guys have to all take um, you know put steroids into them to look big and all this sort of stuff. I mean, this is rubbish. Well, it's rubbish. If we come down to it, it doesn't matter what you look like. That doesn't mean you know if you, you you're fit, you're muscular, or you look beautiful. That's going to enter your jannah. You could be the ugliest person in the world and the poorest person uh, in the world and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enter you Jannah first, subhanAllah. So these are the things, your tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we go back, the, the deen is so crucial for us. It's so important for us to have Islamic knowledge so that we can have um, you know, a proper understanding of how to live your life. You go through an issue, you have to walk in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You uh, make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need Ramadan. You've made so, or you've committed so many sins. This is the month of forgiving. This is the time to come back to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. You ask Allah, and He forgives. Again, if we go back to the narration that, that Ali was mentioning about that guy who, who killed 99 men, eventually he was 100. The scholar told him something very crucial to move away from that town that was sinful, that was evil. You need to move away from that t- uh, that town. So he moved away, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, Subhanallah, He took his soul away from him almost halfway through to that next town. And when the angels came to debate, who's going to take his soul? The, the, the angels of, of heaven, they came and they said, no, he's repented and gone to Allah. But the angels that were, um, the angels of, that one, the others that wanted to take him to the hellfire said, well, this guy's done absolutely nothing good. Nothing. And through the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they moved him. One of the nations mentions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moved him closer yeah, to the land he was going to. Because depending whether he was closer to the first town or second town, that would depend on his, uh, his akhra. And Allah, through His mercy, moved him closer to that uh, other town so that he could enter Jannah. So us as individuals, we should never judge anyone. We're going to sin. 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 And we're going to continue to sin. But Allah, who will Ghafoor Rahim, He is the most gracious, most merciful. And He has the right to forgive, not us. And again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows His home, knows His people, knows the one that He created. He created us. And he knows we're going to sin, and that's why he is the most gracious, most merciful. Our Lord who forgives at any time, any time. You want to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the doors of mercy are open. So come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's so important. I've sinned a million times. I'm sure every single one that's watching at the moment, we've sinned that a million times. But that doesn't mean you despair in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Come back to him. Come back to him. Come back to him. Just uh, one question as well. One last question for you, inshallah. Um, if we do suspect our loved ones are in this situation, um, where can we go for them to get help, inshallah? So do, is our first choice Look, if, a rehab? If that, if that, there's something that we're doing, um, part of the Hassan Foundation, um, is where we're actually purchasing a land at the moment now that's going to be a drug counselling area because drug rehab is so, totally something different. That's something where you need them to sleep, they need to move away from the, the, you know, the, the, the people they're around. Um, we're going to start off with a drug counselling thing and we're dr- trying to um, uh, look after the ones that are just getting addicted or they just tried drugs and they're trying to come off. This is our first step into coming into this. And eventually the bigger goal, again, depending on the, the community funding, the community support, that's something that we, we, you know, we want to do eventually, inshallah. But our first step is at least a drug counselling um, uh, area. So that facility should be um, uh, finalized. Hopefully next month uh, we should be uh, purchasing the property. Then I think we need about a year to sort of set it up and then do, do everything from there, inshallah. Um, so that's something that we as the uh, Lahsan Foundation are trying to do because we know there's a problem and it's getting worse. You know, and we need brothers like uh, Brother Fred to come on board as well because you need motiv- uh, motivational speakers. You know, I can't talk about addiction if I was never addicted. I, I, I don't know. I can't say, no, do this or do that. may not work, subhanAllah. You that's know, right. I might have friends and can advise. But I don't know individually how it feels, the internal feeling. You know, when, I, when I'm uh, going cold turkey and I'm shaking and I really need something, how do you get through that? That's right. I can talk about <clears> the wakul, <throat> but at that stage, at that stage of addiction, yeah, when you are addicted, to say to someone, look, you need to have the wakul in Allah, it may not be enough. You may need other things. Again, we need the professionals all to be involved in this, subhanAllah. Ahmed, sure. can I just touch base on what you're saying? Um, we do 
the community does need a Islamic Rehabilitation Centre because <coughs> people that I know that have been to rehab over the years, they let them, like, all they do is talk about drugs in there. How are you feeling today? This is your day five. Wow, it's my day five. The other b bloke, yep. The other sister, yep. All they do in those rehabs is is they, they get out. Like I know people they've left rehab and gone went and str like went and w went and took stuff str straight from there. I've I've heard of people have stuff get stuff dropped off to the rehab. Online. Yes, dropped off to the rehab. Even take it in there with them. So, all these drugs that they give you, all this stuff, and then like it's you need you need one with proper brothers. It's got to be an Islamic environment. Learn, remind them of Allah. Make sure they pray. Like bring, bring, bring back the the the, the identity. R remind them who they are. Yeah, if these other places. You don't know who's in there. Like you, it's just random. You just rock up and there's five other people, ten other people, and they, all they're doing is talking about it. So what you're saying, Hello. it's got to be a proper, proper Islamic um, yeah. center. One of the things that you touched on before the, that we want to hit on is we're, we're trying our best to make it free, if not near cost, because that's one thing as well. You know, you know sometimes there's, these people that are addicted absolutely have nothing, and there's no hope for them. Their family so can't afford it. The family can't afford yeah. it, and the first thing, first, f the first step you take is to rectify and identify the problem, and admit to it, accept it, seek help. Don't go in your little bubble and curl up in a little shell and try to hide because you're just going to end up in a dark place. And I've I've buried a lot of friends, Muslims, non-Muslims that took their own life. Some went to bed, didn't wake up. Some had massive accidents. Because they weren't in their right state of mind. Some have gone and done crazy things with weapons and harmed other people and got harmed themselves because they don't know what's going on in their head. There's 10 different things going on. So, um, I think we'll wrap it up for the night, inshallah. Um, I just want to say, Yanni, for, for those who are going through this, um, we are here for you, inshallah. Inshallah. Please yeah. do reach out. Um, don't think that you will be judged harshly. You won't be judged at all. Um, there is a community that's willing to help, inshallah. Um, Jazakallah khair for listening. Jazakallah khair to Brother Ali and Brother Fred and Brother uh, Abu Ahmed. Um, the advice is much appreciated. The, the stories of experience are much appreciated. And inshallah, we ask Allah to, pr to protect our community, to protect Amen. our children, Amen. to protect us, and to Amen. rectify the affairs of the Ummah bi'ibnillah. Jazakum mm. Allah khair. And just to remind you, next week's uh, topic for Tuesday, uh, Wednesday will be Ramadan momentum, inshallah. So how to keep up, uh, how to keep the momentum going even after the month is, is midway where the momentum starts to die out and continue after Ramadan, inshallah. Barakallah feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.